we are looking at chapter number 14 which is source or sources of energy question answer on sources of energy first is a solar water heater cannot be used to get hot water on a cloudy day why the answer is first of all the option b is correct because uh, the solar heater is uh, using the solar energy in order to heat the water. So, it would require the infrared rays basically coming from daylight that is intense sunlight to function properly. But in a cloudy day or on a cloudy day, the sunlight reflect back to the sky, some are absorbed, some are scattered from the clouds and they are ultimately unable to reach the ground. That is the solar energy is not available for solar heater to work properly. Therefore, the solar water heater will not function on a cloudy day. Which of the following is not an example of biomass energy source? Is this the answer? Biomass is what? First of all the answer is C. Others are not uh, true or you can say only this is not an example others are true. So biomass is a source of energy that are, is obtained from biodegradable natural things. It can be from plant, it can be from animal waste. But when we talk about nuclear energy, the, this nuclear energy is produced during nuclear reactions like fission, like fusion. Fission is breaking of, uh, you know, you can say atom and fusion is combining. Uh, it involves a lot of things, you know, in atoms we have electron, proton, neutron. So just for the, in the upper, uh, upper surface, just know that fission means breaking, fusion means adding. So this produces a huge amount of energy. So nuclear energy is not an example of biomass energy. On the other hand, water is a plant material, grober gas is formed from animal dung and coal is a fossil fuel and that has come from buried remains of plants and animals. So these are biomass products. Most of the sources of energy we use represent stored solar energy. So which of the following is not ultimately derived from sun's energy. Again the answer remain as nuclear energy. Why? As we just saw that nuclear energy is released during nuclear fission or fusion. Now this produces a lot of energy. That tremendous amount of energy is produced here. The energy released during this reaction comes from mass of element. Actually the mass is converting into energy. There is no role of uh, sunlight on these reactions. So that is why we are saying that nuclear energy is not ultimately derived, derived from the sun energy. But the geothermal energy, wind energy and biomass, they are directly or indirectly derived from solar energy only. Compare and contrast fossil fuels and sun as direct sources of energy. So fossil fuels, these are energy sources. We know about coal and petroleum, we use petrol every day. These are obtained from the remain of plant and animal millions of years ago and because of pressure, temperature, etc. They are formed into coal and petroleum. So ultimately they are the animals and plants only. And they are directly available for us human being use. And these fossil fuels are the direct source of energy. But their amounts is limited. These are in limited amount. So these are non-renewable source of energy because the because we cannot replenish or the nature cannot replenish it again. It will take millions of years for their formation. It will take millions of years. Presently, if you if you eat them or if you consume them, they are not going to come again in coming years. So fossil fuels are uh, very costly also. But when we talk about sun, ultimate source of energy, this is solar energy, this is renewable source of energy. Today sun has come, morning 6 o'clock. It may come at 7 but it will come. Every day it will come. So solar energy is renewable and direct source of energy. The sun has been shining for years now, several years and for next 5 billion years it is not going anywhere. So solar energy is available free of cost to all in unlimited amount. Nobody will take charge or you know ask you dollar for solar energy. and sun is kind enough to replenish it by itself. 
compare and contrast biomass and hydroelectricity as sources of energy biomass this is derived from whom dead plants animal waste these are not useful for us because dead plant they are dead animal waste we have they have eaten and now they have consumed they have got the energy now it is waste so it is naturally replenished it is result of natural process the wood and gober gas they are some of the example of biomass then we come to hydroelectricity uh, electricity we know that water contains or anything at a height has a potential energy so when this water drops down from a height the potential energy is converted into the kinetic energy and this kinetic energy can be used to roll the turbines we can use we can employ the dams build dams and energy from it can be produced again and again because water is not going anywhere it will come 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 uh, because the glaciers are going to uh, melt and water will come so it is harnessed from water and obtained from mechanical processes hydroelectricity what are the limitations of extracting energy from wind waves and tides in first view wind waves and tides are everywhere and we see that we can easy, easily extract energy from them but there are certain limitations to them what are the limitation first we'll talk about wind see wind energy is harnessed by whom windmills windmills and uh, one of the limitation of this extracting energy from wind is that windmill would require wind of speed at least 15 km an hour in order to generate electricity also a large number of windmills are required because you can't have you can expect to have a lot of energy from just one windmill it covers a huge area There's, that means you have to give a huge area to them to install windmill for example for a 1 megawatt generator the farm needs about 2 hectare of land and the initial cost of establishment of farm is quite high only the rich people can do it moreover since this tower and blades are exposed to the vagaries or you can see the hostile hostility of the rain the sun the storm and cyclone they need a high level of maintenance so this is costing too much these are the limitations for with wind when we come to wave see very strong ocean waves are required we can't have just you know can't extract energy with uh, waves which are having very uh, low energy for that we need strong waves tides they are low tides there are high tides so very high tides are required in order to extract energy from tides as we just saw in this waves we need high waves we need high tides so this tidal energy is harnessed by constructing a dam see we can construct a dam here uh, just uh, across a narrow opening of uh, to the sea and the location where such dams can be built they are limited and it is very cumbersome very difficult you know a government has to intervene and government only government can do it uh, because this this uh, sea coast is belongs to government and this in, includes a master class engineering you might have seen in dubai and uh, the the arab countries how they have have the how they have harnessed the power of uh, various uh, uh, natural resources they have on what basis would you classify energy sources as renewable and non renewable exhaustible and inexhaustible are the options given in a and b the same let me start with answering this that these two are same because renewable means it can be renewed that is it is inexhaustible non renewable means once you consume it it's not going to come again it is exhaustible so there are certain methods let me just don't uh, read this this is a this some somewhere it has come so just ignore this let us come to the point now the source of energy that replenishes in nature is known as renewable source of energy like the sun the wind the moving water the biomass there are so many natural resources which the mother nature has provided us these are the examples of renewable sources of energy because they are not going to end they will come again and again they are there for us the source of energy that does not replenish in nature is known as non renewable source of energy coal you burn it it will never come petroleum you have to fill the petrol every every second day in your in your bike or a car natural gas again 
same thing so these are example of non renewable sources of energy it will take millions of years to form coal petroleum natural gas again exhaustible sources are those sources of energy that are going to deplete that will exhaust after a few hundred years the coal petroleum these are the exhaustible source of energy when it comes to inexhaustible source of energy these are the source sources which will not exhaust in future so these are unlimited biomass is one of the inexhaustible sources of energy so we conclude by saying that this a and b that is exhaustible inexhaustible renewable non renewable they are same what are the qualities of ideal source of energy if you uh, indicate or say that ideal this is ideal source of energy it should be economical easily accessible smoke and pollution free easy to store and transport and it should be producing or able to produce huge amount of heat and energy on burning right what are the advantages and disadvantages of using solar cooker are these places uh, are, are there places where solar cooker would have limited utility yes if you see you see the globe the sunlight comes directly here but at these points the poles and mostly about these areas there are there are least sunlight so these are the only uh, uh, these are the only area where you can think of having solar cookers so solar cookers they use sun energy in order to cook food stuff sun energy or solar energy is inexhaustible clean very clean and renewable source of energy it is free from for all nobody is going to charge for it and available in abundance unlimited amount so the uh, so operating a solar cooker is is a uh, uh, you know is essentially not expensive right but the disadvantage is also there disadvantage of solar cooker is that the solar cooker is very expensive it works only in sunlight it needs infrared rays to heat up the food on on a cloudy day it will become useless and these places as i said these places where days are very short these places that are that are mostly covered by cloud covers around the year they cannot use solar cooker they have limited utility of solar cooker what are the environmental uh, consequences of increasing demand for energy what step would you suggest to reduce energy consumption see energy if someone some uh, laws has law has said energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be transformed but energy production from something if it is non renewable then energy once consumed that material is also consumed it will not come again so industrialization we we are so many people indians and pakistanis and uh, bangladeshis we are so many in that we are developing economy we industrialization is necessary because industrialization uh, without this industrialization there will be no uh, employment we need some uh, the products to eat to survive so industrialization increases the demand for energy and fossil fuels are easily accessible source of energy that will fulfill the demand of industrialization but the increase or increased use of fossil fuels has a very bad harsh effect on the environment too much exploitation or, or use of fossil fuels will increase the level of greenhouse gas content in the atmosphere so what these uh, greenhouse gases does the sunlight will come right and these greenhouse uh, gases will uh, they are acting to they are acting in the way to to keep our globe warm but when these content increases it will heat it more it will not allow the sun energy to reflect back after being used so the temperature will increase and if it comes around 2 degree average temperature of the globe it will be a disaster for every one of, of us so it will result in global warming and rise in the sea level so when the sea level will rise the low lying areas or the you can say islands they are going to submerge in the water so it is not possible to completely reduce the consumption of fossil fuels as we are saying but some measures can be taken like we can use electrical appliances wisely we we should not use electricity uh, we should not waste electricity unnecessary usage of water should be avoided every now and then wherever it is possible and public transport system can be used for mass transit you know at a large scale not one or two you have to, everyone has to do this and these are very small steps but they will help 
in reducing the consumption of natural resources and consequently conserving them. So these were question and answer on this topic. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.